Hello and welcome to another episode of Monday Night Madness. My name is Adam and in this video we'll be going over a game that was mentioned last week in last week's Monday Night Madness, which didn't get very much attention due to the fact that it went up on Tuesday, but technical difficulties and all that. And it's Path of Exile. It's another ARPG, uh, if you're familiar with the Torchlight series or the Diablo series, any of those. ARPG, action RPG, it's mostly driven by... Oh, I get to kill lots of things and get lots of loot. What is there not to like about this? So, it's... I mean, in that sense, it plays just like any other ARPG. Run around, hack and slash. But it reminds me so strongly of the Diablo series that I felt that it needed its own specific video to go over it. And the reason for this being is that certain ARPGs that have gotten popular, including the Torchlight series, have kind of a lighter art style, lighter story, it's it's not really dark or anything like that. And it was specifically stated that one of the reasons they wanted to make Path of Exile the way they did was they wanted a darker, grittier storyline than what a lot of ARPGs are doing. And really so far they've done a great job at that. Um, the story, the environments, the models, as you can see, it's all executed in an extremely well I don't know, placed, well themed manner. And it really reminds me of the Diablo series, especially Diablo 2. Uh, is the first thing I actually thought of when I saw the trailer videos and certain gameplay videos of it. And so that's, that's what first attracted me was oh, it looks really good. It looks. It doesn't look really friendly, and by playing through it I can tell you that it's not very friendly to you and it wants to kill you. And it will. Over and over again. If you're stupid. <laughs> and even if you're not stupid, if you're just unprepared, it's like, oh, I'm sure this won't get... Shit. <laughs> but once I started playing, I realized that there was actually something else, something more, that is extremely great extremely surprising too f um, given how many ARPGs have kind of had cookie cutter builds Torchlight not so much you could delve into all kinds of things in Torchlight and it was awesome this one kind of takes that to the next level with their passive skill points and let's just wipe out this last guy here and we'll take a look at the skill tree as you level up you gain passive skill points and as you do other things you also gain more points and there are six classes, and each of them start in different areas of the skill tree. And so I'm the Marauder, and I started right here. And you see I've got two branches that I can start with. Oh, get more life, or get more melee damage. And then each of those branches off more and more, and they loop back around, connect in some places. Only because there are six classes, and they each start in different positions on the tree, the tree is massive is huge like that's how much I've put points into up close I was like oh wow that's a lot of points huge it's enormous look at how big it is just the, their passive skill tree is just enormous each of the six classes start at one of these different nodes here Marauder here all of them start at different places and it was so it, it's really nice to see that somebody's taking the initiative to be like, hey, yeah, let's not make something really boring, and let's go ahead and give them the freedom to go and, oh, hey, I want to go get more strength points up here, but maybe maybe I need to get some dexterity for certain weapons that I'm not quite good at using yet because their stat requirements are too high. Oh, well, it looks like I can get some extra dexterity if I just stat down into here a couple points. <clears throat> maybe I want to specialize in maces. There's that, too. I just want to specialize in two-handed in general. There's that too. To tanking, is ev there's everything there that you would want to, and it's all accessible by any class so long as you have enough points to get there. For instance, if I hadn't have branched off the way I had, had, ugh, I could have just gone straight this way, taking all the strength points, maybe gone through staves if I wanted it, and then come cut back across to get all the way into here and start looking at like fire resistance, lightning resistance, cold resistance, get more life regeneration, you know, get elemental weapon damage, oh maybe I want to get the vol pack, life leech, just everything life leeches, or it's applied instantly rather. And 
So it's just really comforting to see somebody do that, and paired with the really dark, gritty atmosphere of the game, it makes it feel so much like Diablo without actually being just a clone of Diablo, that it it's something that people that are fans of ARPGs and are maybe not happy with the current trend will be happy to see. It is worth mentioning that it is in beta right now. Um, it's got three acts, and I'm trying to think. I think it was 2014 has been confirmed for Act 4. And while that may seem a while's out, uh, they're not a very big company per se. And so far each act has been really well thought out. I, I'm on Act 2 on this particular character. I've been up to Act 3, through Act 3 actually, on my Duelist, which is one of another six classes we'll get into in a minute here. And it's, they're all each pretty unique, and it's fully randomized. Anything that they could randomize and put random stats on, there's been random stats put onto it. You've got, you have flasks, which is your version of health potions, they have random stats. But there's, the maps are all randomized, outdoors are randomized, inside is randomized. It, ran, everything is random except for your skill points. Random effects on enemies, I don't think I've seen... Or maybe I've been too busy trying not to die, would be a better way to put it. Special enemies that have had the same effects as another group or another one special enemy. The inventory is also exactly like um, Diablo 2, Diablo 1, where that certain items take up certain amounts of space and you kind of have to decide, well, do I want to take this back to town, do I want to take that back to town? So there's a little bit of the inventory management for you. One of the more unique things they've done with their inventory and buying and selling is that there's no gold in the game. You're not going to get showered with just tons of gold coins. Instead, upgrade stones, which you can find pieces of, or full stones even, I think I've picked up a few actually in this video already, are just dropped by enemies which are your currency and then they're also giving you at least in pieces if the item isn't good enough to warrant a full piece being given to you or a full stone from the vendors so the vendors do give you the upgrade stones and you buy with the upgrade stones too so it's kind of a I don't know if you like oh well do I want it's, it's a chance really is what it is do I want this item in particular or do I want to save this upgrade stone, find an item that might be better, and then make it much better with the upgrade stone? So it is a little bit of chance there, or risky gambling, whatever you want to say. Now about the six different classes is they've included three classes that use a single primary stat and three classes that use two of the primary stats at once. So you've got your Marauder, which is this guy right here, your basic barbarian, warrior, pure strength. Witch, which is your pure intelligence. All she uses is intelligence stat. She's a caster. And then your... She's an archer. I think she's called the Huntress, but I'm not entirely sure. Which is your pure dexterity. You know, ranged. Kind of self-explanatory. And then you've got your three other ones, which are your Shadow, which is a roguelike character. He uses... Uh, dexterity and intelligence specifically for his two primary stats and then you've got the duelist who uses strength and dexterity for his primary stats and finally the templar who uses both intelligence and strength for his uh, primary stats so I mean each class is also extremely unique like I said I played through on a different character all the way up to act 3 and they play almost entirely different from each other. Just because you can't do what you can do on a Marauder that you can do on, say, a Huntress. I have to run away a lot on a Huntress, because I will die. I think I might have mentioned that, that the game is trying to kill you, or at least I should. It will kill you if you're not careful. Meanwhile, with the Marauder, I have an ability that just lets me throw myself at the enemies, and then I spam health potions and hope that I can kite them if my health drops too low. In addition to the um, normal health mana pools, you also have a spirit shield, which is a separate stat that you can up through items and everything, which is like a secondary health pool. It's, it's a shield. 
is all it is. It recharges over time and prevents you from actually taking health damage. So if you bump that up high enough, you don't actually ever have to heal yourself. But mine is still incredibly low. And just all in all, it's it's a great game so far. I encourage everybody to check it out um, on their site. It is free to play. They do do a microtransaction model, which has been getting fairly popular with lots of people recently due to the success. Whoa. Whoa, what was that? Due to the success of companies like Riot and all that that have had large amounts of microtransactions and large amounts of profit from that. So they do the same thing, only it's not for items or stats per se. It's it's for like, oh, this looks cool. It's for uh, vanity items. There we go. Vanity items mostly is what uh you can buy. Things that change spell effects. Things that just look cooler that you can use for weapon skins and all that kind of stuff. One more thing that's worth mentioning is the way that abilities and skills, not not passive skills, but just your active skills and abilities are gained or not through levels. You don't get two separate points. You just get passive points and then you find abilities in the form of these gemstones that you then sock into armor and items and then that lets you do that ability. So if you only have, if you've only found one gemstone then you only have one ability. But if you found more then you can have the maximum amount of abilities like, you can look, if you look in the bottom right hand corner of my screen right now, you say I've got everything filled up with a different kind of ability. But that's just because I found lots of stones and they don't all exactly suit me extremely well, but they're there to use and kind of fun to use. Like the fire shield is funny to me. So, I mean, this, every, everything is, is pretty unique in terms of customization and how you want to build your character. And due to the fact that there's different colored gemstones, there's the green ones and uh, blue ones and red ones, each for primary stats. If it's red, it scales off strength most of the time, yada yada. Green is for dexterity. And although if you're colorblind like me, it's a little hard to tell, most of the time you can kind of struggle your way through which ability is scales off what, and most of the time it does have text on it that tells you, hey, this is a dexterity item. So if you're a marauder, might not exactly be the best idea for you to be using it. But I have double strike equipped anyway, which is a dexterity thing, but that's just because it looks cool. Just look at it. Just, uh. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's Path of Exile. It's a great ARPG, awesome, dark, gritty atmosphere. Just, it's an amazing game. Everybody, please check it out at on their website. And that's all we've got for today. Please like, subscribe, favorite, comment. If you didn't like it, comment, dislike. I don't know if there's an ignore button that you can hit, but ignore it too if you want. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.